Hey everybody, it's Millie. Hey there. And you are here at Crafting in My PJs. And today we're going to do a craft. Now, if if you're new to this channel, if you just came, my motto is quick, easy, inexpensive crafts that anybody can do whether you have an artistic bone in your body or not. Um and today is going to kind of push those limits only because it's not as quick because we have some drying time. Um, and it maybe is not as easy as our other crafts. But I think there's plenty of ways you can make it easy if you're not comfortable doing some of the things that I'm going to do to this. All right, so I was in my favorite store the other day, Dollar Tree, and of course they're coming out with lots of garden stuff for the spring season. And this particular item is called the Craft B Wall Decor, 10 inch. And so is it really 10 inches? It is absolutely 10 inches from point to point. And it is, oh, I don't know, my thing doesn't do inches that way. It is 10 inches top to bottom, maybe ten, a nine and three quarters. Okay, and it is an unfinished balsa wood. I think, I'm not sure, we're going to decorate this. We're going to decorate this as is. And I think it can be used just like that as a wall decor. Or... If you wanted to take this and add it to something else, for example, a wreath, um, a larger wreath or something, and have it as part of the primary decoration for that, you could do that too. So for right now, we're going to work with just this and we'll see what happens. Now, um, it is, of course, a bumblebee and a honeycomb, a honeybee. So black and yellow are our colors and so I just pulled out of my stash some black and some yellow and I have some backup black paint which is chalkboard paint um but as I'm looking at this I don't know if I'm going to paint it as much as I thought I was um if the the in between I was going to do black in here but it is the dark burnt look from them however they cut these on whatever machines they cut these on and I think that's actually kind of nice so I think all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top and we're gonna paint the honeycomb part yellow and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the entire bee just the top of it black I'm not even going to worry about the back of my piece at this point and oh by the way this item itself was purchased on the dollar 25 rack so it wasn't extra expensive or anything like that. So as I said before, if you're new to our channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you are a returning friend, thank you for coming back. We always appreciate our returning friends. And if you wouldn't mind and you like this video, could you please give me a thumbs up? You can wait till the end if you'd like to wait till the end. And if you're not a subscriber, if you could subscribe, I would be excited to have more subscribers. That would be great. And if you do subscribe and you would like to know when I put out other new videos, because I used to be on a schedule, but not so much anymore, um, you can ring that notification bell. And that notification bell will tell you when I put out a video. So it'll send you a notification. So that's kind of cool. All right, so I'm not going to have you watch me paint the entire thing, but basically all I'm going to do is take a brush and very, oh, there's something on this brush, <laughs> very carefully paint just the top. And the reason I'm being very careful is I really don't want to paint the edges. I think the edges are fine. If it comes to the point where I make a mess and I do have to paint the edges, then those edges will probably be black. And you know what? Instead of actually painting them, I could probably come along with a permanent marker or any kind of black marker and just color the edges. And that would be cool too. All right, so 
our, our first step in this project is going to be just painting. We are just painting. And then after we finish painting, we're gonna come back and there's a couple of things that we might do to decorate the bumblebee itself and make him stand out just a little bit. Now, my thought is we, I am going to use some resin, uh, Dollar Tree resin that I purchased there on the $5 rack. I'm gonna use some resin and I am going to uh, glue some shattered glass that I, I was able to get through Timu. And you can get shattered glass in a bunch of different places. We'll talk about that when we get closer to that. And then I'm gonna take some resin and just drizzle over the body part where the glass is. So that that glass is very secure and it gives it a nice shiny seal. And it'll be, I think, really pretty. It's not a hard step to do, but if it's something that intimidates you, you know, resin's not really your thing, that's okay too. Um, because glitter, black and yellow or gold glitter would be very nice. I don't know why I have all these funny things coming out of my paint. Um, all these dust buddy, buddy, bunnies, I can't talk. These dust buddies, there we go. Um, glitter, black and gold glitter, would do the same thing and you could um, seal it with Mod Podge. Or you could do something even very simple like black and yellow pom-poms that would give you some th three dimension, some the dimension to your project, but not involve any kind of painting or um, sealing or anything like that. And the reason that I don't think it's gonna, we're gonna stick with, I think, black black and yellow stripes here. The legs will probably stay black. The wings, I'm probably gonna trim black, but put the gold or the yellow in between. And then I will probably make all of this black with yellow eyes. It's kinda what I think I might do in mine. Um, you are welcome to change anything up in your own. All right, so I'm going to stop babbling on. I've given you all the directions. I'm going to go ahead and paint. Uh, typically, these balsa wood pieces, they typically they take, take paint pretty well. Sometimes you have to do a second coat, and um, sometimes not. It just depends depends on what you're painting, what color you're painting, and the type of paint you're using. So um, I will be back when the black and the yellow are finished dry. All right, I'll see you in a few. All right, well, we're back. Now, my black paint, I don't know, it's old. So it came out almost like a wash, but that's okay because this part I'm covering. Also, when I said to you, maybe I'll take a black marker, I did that. I took a black marker and I drew on the inside, much easier than painting. And I, and I do think the black gave it, so <laughs> here were the three markers I ended up using, um, gave it more of a finished look. I don't know, you can't even see it, I know. But I know I did that, so let's go with that all right so i want to show you what this was the shattered glass that i purchased from let's see if i can get you closer purchased from timu it was very cheap it was very inexpensive um a dollar something a bag i really thought i was getting bigger shattered glass crushed glass and here's the gold it's it's almost really like a chunky glitter um so that's when i said you could use a glitter so we're going to use it I, i'm not upset by it in any any shape or form but uh i thought it would look so pretty on here it'll give it a little bit of dimension and a little bit of shine uh so that's what i'm going to do now 
in order to keep this, is I'm gonna use an epoxy as an overlay on mainly the bumblebee. Um, so I really don't need to, to do, to secure it down. That epoxy is gonna keep it there, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a glue down first. Number one, these are light. These aren't like the shattered glass I've used in other products. If I put the epoxy on top, it might literally move it and make it go. That was prim primarily it. <laughs> That's the reason, because I don't want it to move. So I'm going to use Fabrifix, and the reason I'm using Fabrifix, this is really for fabric. It says fabrics, lace, leathers, trims, and more. I use it usually with fabrics and lace and papers, but I'm going to use it here because the one thing I, well, one of the things I really like about Fabrifix is that it dries quickly. And so it's almost like, um, it's almost like uh, hot glue in a bottle. And so I don't really want things moving around. So, okay, so we're gonna start with black. So I'm going to to lay out this Fabrifix on the areas that I colored black. Um, again, this was no, no uh, artistic uh, skills at all involved here. This was literally just drawing on a, a coloring in different places with the paint. That's it. I am going to kind of spread it out a little bit because I do want my glass to stick. Oh, it's already starting to dry. So let's get this black on here. Where's my, my wipe? Here, I'll bring you in a little closer. All right, and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on like glitter. That's it. We're gonna use it just like glitter. Um, well, maybe could have put like a a paper plate or something or a piece of paper underneath so to make it easier to get it back in the bag. Didn't think about that. All right, I'm giving it a really good coat. And I'm going to kind of push this down here. And let's, let's shake off and see what we look like. Look how cute that looks. Gives it a little bit of, um, like I said, dimension. Now, I'm going to take my, ooh, where is my? I have lost my, my tongue depressor. I usually have a tongue depressor here. I'm going to have to find it before we do the... Alright, so let's see. I'm going to kind of push this into areas that maybe didn't get quite enough. The glue dried. So see how fast that fabric fix dries. So especially when you're doing things you want um, quick adhesion, fabric fix is wonderful for that. Oh, it's really hard to pick this up off of here. It's gonna be fun cleaning it up. All right, now I am going to pull this off of the yellow part there and right there and right there. And there we go, there we go. All right, so that is layer one. Well, it's our first thing. Let me try and move this. If not, I'm gonna get a piece of paper and put down here make this much easier. See how it's sticking? I don't want to fool with that. All right, let me be like All right, I'm back with a couple of changes. Piece of paper underneath, easier to get it off. It The glass sticks to the silicone, not, a pro not easy. Also, 
changed over to some Eileen's Tacky Glue because I don't want it drying that fast. I can't work with it. So just some minor changes. I also, I put my glass in little cup. This is supposed to be for my resin, but I can go get another one over there. And um, so that I could pour and get it back in the container easy. All right, so these, where I've put the glue is the other area that I want black, the black glass. And so again, just treating it like glitter, spreading it on. Let's see if I can. Alright, I'm gonna have to get some off the bottom. Let's see how we look if I tap. Oh, I forgot to make my two little eyes. I forgot all about that. It's okay. Don't know if I need eyes, really. I was just thinking that would be kind of cool. I could find little gold beads and put his eyes. We'll see. I also pulled out a Cricut tool, and that helps me clean up some of the glass that's in, you know, places that I don't want the black glass. All right. All right. Okay. All right, black is finished. I'm gonna let that set for just a second because, you know, the Eileen's. And I'm gonna put my black Back in the container. I will link in the description box some the Timu order that this you know that this came from, um, and also on Amazon where you can find it if you would like it. Some shattered glass, and um, yeah. All right, so here's our gold. The gold is really pretty. It's really shiny. Again, this looks like chunky glitter to me. All right, so let's get more Eileen's. All right, we're back. Had to do some heavy pounding to get it down. All right, so I am catching some of the black beads. And I'm trying to push them out of the way. A little bit of overage is not going to be horrible. If you don't want things mixing like that. Like, I'm okay with this. If you're not, then, you know, take a, a toothpick or any kind of pointy tool and just pick up that black out of there or whatever color you're working with. As you might have started with the yellow or the gold. All right, let's see how it looks. Go with the gold here. Let's see if I can do that. All right. I am sure there's going to be some cleaning up to do, but that's okay. There you go. What do you think? I think he looks pretty cool. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup, get this all cleaned up, and then we're going to mix up our resin and we're going to get him sealed. I'll be right back. All right, we are getting ready to do the resin. 
so what I have done is I have lifted. First off, I put a silicone pad down. You need something to protect your workspace. So if you're going to do the resin, these next directions are specifically for you. So if you're gonna do resin, we need something to protect your workspace. This stuff, once it dries, you can't get it off, except for silicone, it peels off silicone. So you need wax paper, you need newspaper, you need something underneath here for the drips, because there'll be drips. The piece itself, I have on top of a wooden block, um, preferably something that fits underneath where you're putting the resin, and but doesn't touch the sides because that resin's gonna possibly drip over. And you, if it drips onto that wooden piece, and it, it it's not gonna come off that wooden piece. And it could possibly seal your design, your piece onto that wooden block. So you don't have to be careful. That was the only thing I could find. The resin I'm gonna be using is the Dollar Tree resin. It's on the $5 rack. You get a total of six ounces, three ounces of each. Whatever resin you use, whether it be from Amazon, whether it be from Dollar Tree, read the directions and follow the directions on your resin. So on this particular one, we're gonna measure equal amounts of resin and harder, so A and B. And then we're gonna mix thoroughly for three to five minutes. Oh, I have to find my, um, I have to get some more. Oh, there they are. There's my popsicle stick, popsicle stick for stirring. I've just ordered some silicone pieces so I don't have to throw away stuff in between projects for resin, but they haven't come in yet. And then you're gonna pour slowly and evenly. And you, it says here, let it dry for 24 hours. Or typically, this one doesn't say it, but typically resin is self-leveling and um, it will level over your piece. We want the main part of our resin to be on our shiny bumblebee. Um, I will maybe coat with just a fingertip some of the other wooden piece it depends on how stable this is i'm afraid it's going to fall over on me um i have to find something else to put here up at the top so it doesn't tilt i have to find something small and um whatever you do i know mine says this wear gloves when you're doing resin and a something a mask or something it because the this one doesn't say it's low odor but i don't smell anything so i have a feeling it might be but i'm not sure so i typically do wear a mask when i'm doing this all right so before we actually pour the resin i've already have it set up in a and b and these darn little cups yeah i've marked it not really necessary these darn little cups, um, I can't see anything. So I put a black mark where I'm gonna mix. We don't need a lot because we're dribbling on here. And then the leftovers, we're just gonna kind of spread out in a very thin coat over the wooden part. If I need to mix more, I can. But I didn't really wanna waste it. So, so. I want to let my glue dry right now because this tacky glue, this Eileen's that I used, is still white. So I want to let this dry so it's clear before I pour. So I'm going to come back in about 20 minutes and or I'm going to hit it with my heat gun while I'm off camera just to get things to dry. And then I'll come back when it's time to pour. All right, see you in a few. You don't want this stuff on your hands. So I'm going to very gently <laughs> pour. And I'm gonna kind of stick to the center. And I'm gonna drizzle. 
it's going to spread out kind of that gravity effect, you know. Let's go this way. We might need more. I don't know. I'm going to make sure I kind of drip on my legs. About four drips per large leg. Let's go up here, get our antenna. So how much did I mix? I mixed 0.5 all told. Now we're going to use that gloved hand and I'm just going to kind of spread some of this on the other piece. I might end up making just a little bit more just so I have enough to cover everything. Let's see how we're going here. See, as far as our bumblebee, it's pretty much all covered. There you go. All right, so off camera, I am gonna go ahead and mix just a little bit more. I can see we need some right here. And I just wanna make sure everything's covered well. And I just like you saw me with my finger, I'm gonna take the extra and I'm gonna rub some along the honeycomb itself just to give that a very thin coat. All right, I'll be right back when I'm all done. All right, so I mixed up another batch and I used my silicone brush to just kind of dab it on all of the honeycomb. And now I am gonna take what's left in here and just pour it on, like I told you, some areas I thought maybe didn't get just quite enough. All right, so that means, so everything has gotten a full coat. Let's just put this in the middle. Again, it's going to level out. So I did need 0. 0.5 of um, resin to fill this up. All right, now our, <laughs> our little guy, I can't move it because I only have one gloved hand on. Um, our little guy has got to sit now for a while. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow and I'll let you see how he looks and to decide what we're gonna do with him because I don't know. I haven't quite figured it out yet. All right, I'll see you in a little while. While we are waiting for our bumblebee to set, Let's work on a wreath that we can put the bumblebee plaque on and use it as a decoration. So I have one of these 14 inch wire wreaths from Dollar Tree. And while I was there the other day, I found this adorable, look at this, bumblebee burlap. It's 18 by 21 inches and I think it'll make a great background. I spread it out 18 inches by 21, um, I think, yes. And then I cut two inch strips, just like that. Not very specific, laid it around. Are we facing the right way? Do they, do they have a right way? I guess they do. So I guess you can have your bumblebees going the right way or one way. I could only get two, but then they also had these adorable daisies. These were all $1.25. So I figure if I don't have enough, and I just tied one tie, that's it. I did kind of make sure that my tie was 
my knot was kind of at the bottom and that way um, these will still stick out but it'll cover the majority of the wire so I might have to use a few of the daisies in here to fill it all in um, or you know I have some plain burlap I could do the plain burlap to fill in because I don't think two I think you really need three I think you need three bundles of the burlap and um, that will cover nicely and then you can squish and make them as close together so if you want to cut up four bundles you can most definitely do that and then what I'll probably do is after I get everything the way I want it I'll probably turn it over and run a line of glue on the back side so nothing really moves around and it kind of stays I did not iron my my burlap or anything so um, at first I thought well that's a mistake and then as I looked at it I thought well no this is all right so if you happen to have some plain burlap at home or some different stuff at home um, these are two inches wide by eight, 21 inches long that's how big these are so any material you could cut up any springtime material would be great for this and um, it would be really cute so you could do a mixture of spring prints okay so so far we're finishing up one roll of burlap and it's almost it's almost halfway it's almost about halfway let's see where's the yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the second roll and I'm gonna put that on here and I'm, we'll see if it's enough if it's enough we'll leave it the way it is just bumblebees if we need to add a little bit more then either we'll use the flowers or I will we'll find my plain burlap I, I think I have some burlap ribbon too and that way I wouldn't have to cut up another you know bolt of it so see it kind of spreads out I just want to make sure all my wire is covered um, so that's what, if you put the knot toward the back then it covers more of the wire but then when it's up against your door or wherever you hang it these pieces will fluff out all right so let me go do the rest of this oh, the cockatoo is in a tizzy I don't know what's going on I fed her I watered her and she's screaming up a storm so I'll be back in a minute after I have filled in this side and we'll see if we need to add more and sorry there goes the cockatoo still fussing back there all right so this was two rolls two rolls of this crafter square burlap cut on the 18 inch side making 21 inch pieces cut approximately two inches wide I have every now and then I get a gap um, it made 18 to 20 strips because I wasn't exactly two inches every time so where I was a maybe a touch thin up there is oops where I will put our bow the bow came from Michael's on on the clearance Christmas aisle um, they were 90 percent off and so this is the third piece of this large bow i'm using i just broke it down and used another piece on something else and so this on here now i'm going to get where did i put it to dry i put it somewhere on the other side of the room all right so, so here's our bumblebee that we resined but we also talked about that you could just do mod podge and if you wanted some texture, you could do glitter or pom-poms or felt or pipe cleaners or anything. I use some shattered glass. And I will attach it right here on my wreath. And there, oh, where did that come from? And there you go. There is my door hanger. All right, so let's see. How much did it cost? We had, I can't count the ribbon for this because it was the 90% off ribbon. 
So I had a dollar twenty-five, two fifty for the burlap, another dollar twenty-five for the ring. So we're at five dollars. Um, the shattered glass was a dollar each from a little pack from Timu. So seven dollars for that, and you know that's it. The paint I already had, the um epoxy i already had but i also have mod podge so if i had mod podged it i could have done that i will attach everything with either a little bit of wire or some hot glue because i have my hot glue gun going and i will close out this video so thank you guys thank you guys for watching and y'all have a wonderful day bye